In this video, I will guide you through the process of making and baking Dunkles Trebelbrot, which is German for dark bread made with the spent grains from brewing beer. We will prepare a pre-ferment, measure and mix the ingredients, knead the dough, let the dough rise, form the loaves, and then bake them. The day before we bake, we will mix a pre-ferment. This mix of flour, water, and dry yeast develops for a longer time than the rest of the dough. Its purpose is to add to the flavor, texture, and other qualities of the final product. As long as you can plan ahead, mixing a pre-ferment is trivial, so I recommend it for almost any bread you make, even the most basic loaves. Into our main mixing bowl, we pour water, mix in the dry yeast, add the flour, and stir it until it is homogeneous. The total weight is 402 grams. Cover it and let it sit. This one we mix the evening before mixing the final dough, about 12 hours beforehand. Just over a week earlier, we had brewed a nutty brown ale that mostly used extract but included some steeped grains. We blended the grains to make them smoother. The next morning, the yeast had started eating, multiplying, and producing carbon dioxide. On the prior day, the pre-ferment was firm and paste-like, but now it is elastic, loose, and bubbly. We add 500 grams of the blended grains to the pre-ferment and stir them in until fully mixed. Then we add the 600 grams of water. I zero the scale so it only shows the weight of the water we added, not the total mix. We add 2 grams of dry yeast, 40 grams of salt. We're using coarse salt here, but we could use table salt as well. Then 1000 grams, which is 1 kilogram of flour. We're using Robin Hood brand all-purpose original flour, which has about 12% protein content. Feel free to use any brand of similar flour. I'm using a butter knife, which is not the best utensil to use. A mixing spoon or plastic dough scraper is probably better for this. Take a look at how the mix breaks apart so readily. Remember this as we watch the dough develop over the course of the video. As the flour mixes into the water, we can feel the mix get stiffer. It resists our strokes, but it is very important that we mix completely. Then we let the mixed dough rest to allow the flour to hydrate and the gluten to, de to develop. We're leaving the dough for about an hour. I filmed these quiet parts of the video in a time-lapse mode so we can observe any changes without having watched the whole time. Now that an hour has passed, the mix has loosened and hydrated into an elastic dough ready for kneading. People will generally knead on a counter, but I usually prefer to knead in the bowl to avoid extra cleanup. We gently gather, stretch, and fold the dough, rotate the bowl, then repeat. As we knead it, we can see how the dough becomes less wet and more smooth compared to when we started. Then we let it rise for another hour. Over the lapsing time, we can see the dough relax at first and begin to rise a little bit. Then we repeat, kneading it again. We can remember or rewind and check how the initial mix broke apart easily when we were first stirring it. Now we can pull the whole dough out of the bowl while only holding on to one end of it. Now we leave it for a second rise of about an hour, which gives us some time to cut an apple for a snack surreptitiously while the camera takes its photos. With this rise, the yeast has had more time to get going, and with further gluten development, we can better notice the growth. Now we do our third and final knead, as we did before.
For the final rise, we see that the dough almost fills the whole mixing bowl. Watch this dough jiggle as I move the bowl. Here, I add reused parchment paper into the pan to prevent the loaves from sticking. I use three pieces, one large piece for the bottom and sides, and two smaller pieces overlapping for the ends. Then we divide the dough in half. I'm using the butter knife again, but having a dough scraper on hand would be super useful in this situation. Normally we want to maintain most of the gas in the dough, as well as develop tension in the surface of the loaf. This dough is quite wet, so it is a challenge to get it into the pan intact. Looking at the loaf, we see a large bubble of carbon dioxide. The thin skin of the bubble shows us that we have achieved good gluten development because it shows us the dough can maintain a thin membrane without breaking. A common test for gluten development is the windowpane test. To test dough, we stretch a piece of it to see whether we can stretch it thin enough that light can shine through it. And it can. Good work everybody. Then we rinse the bowl with cold water. Do not put off the cleanup, especially the things that will be more difficult to clean once they're dry. Then we loosely cover the loaves and let them rise for an hour. I think it is good to cover them loosely but fully. Because this dough is pretty wet and it won't dry out much, it's fine for us to leave it partly open. We're going to let the loaves rise for an hour or an hour and a half. It is normal to score loaves with a razor blade, but I don't have one so we're scoring these loaves with a knife and a pair of scissors. The purpose of scoring is to allow the expansion in the crust of the bread as it rises. We have preheated the oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 230 degrees Celsius. We pour in some boiling water into the steam pan on the lower rack and we place the two loaves into the hot oven. The steam in the oven helps the bread stay moist and keeps the surface of the loaves elastic for longer. The initial rise of the bread in the oven is called oven spring. After 10 or 15 minutes, the loaves have sprung and we can pull the pan out and let the moisture out of the oven. We turn the oven down to 390 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 200 degrees Celsius to let the bread finish baking. For the second part of the bake, the bread has already mostly risen and we are letting the crust harden and the inside of the dough to set. We leave them in for an additional 30 to 35 minutes. Now we turn the oven to off. We take the pans out, peel the paper off, and put the loaves on the rack to cool. The common test for doneness of a loaf of bread is to tap it to see whether it sounds hollow. The addition of the dark mix of Trebert spent brewing grains has definitely added color and flavor to what would otherwise be ordinary loaves of white bread. The process of adding the grains is trivial in terms of the extra work involved, and it also helps us conserve flour. Here are the measures for the ingredients with an estimate of the weights of grain and water in the Trebert. The flour, water, and dry yeast each appear twice to show the two separate times they are added and mixed. These are the baker's percentages, which are the ratio of weight of each ingredient to the total weight of the flour. In this table, I've included the estimated dry weight of the spent grain as part of the total flour weight. Also, for the convenience of those who are more comfortable using volume measures, I've provided volume approximations for both Canadian and US measures. Canadian cups are a quarter liter, whereas U.S. cups are a half a liquid pint in U.S. customary units. Here is the basic process we followed over the course of the video. Thank you for watching. Please comment below with questions and suggestions. Hit the subscribe button to hear about future videos. 
and all the best for your baking in the future.